there's a lot of work that goes into these into these engagements around a pen test. Um, I almost feel like you're probably just shoving pizza underneath the door and telling Kyle not to come out until he's done with his report or done with his test. That's Brian. Um, so I'm not I'm not sure how that really how that really goes down. But you know, other than telling me that I'm you know I'm fat, um, what what what's in it? What's in it for me? Uh, I feel like I'm really vulnerable right now. I feel like man, I just let this, this, you know, a, a kid into my network who's going to really tell me why I'm really fat or I suck or my network isn't, isn't vulnerable. I know there's a compliance angle to this, but in respect to the pen test, what, what, what's in it for me? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in there. You know, compliance aside, let, let's just take that out of the mix. What's in it for you as, as the recipient of a pen test? I think the most important answer is that you're getting the answers to the test here. Uh, you know, a real cyber criminal, a hacker, someone that's going to break into your network, steal your data, you know, destroy your data, whatever it is that their goal is, we're going to come in and do all of these tests and things in a non-malicious way. We're going to find the vulnerabilities, report those to you, help you fix them so that you're no longer vulnerable to those types of attacks. So. I think number one, uh, what's in it for me is is really getting the chance to identify these things and correct them before the criminals uh, find those. Uh, Kyle, I think mentioned script kitties before, and you know the reality is there there's two very different types of attacks out there. There's the attacks where someone has targeted your organization, and in those situations, you know you, you have a lot more risk and a lot more to worry about. Uh, than these, you know, script kitties or these automated bots or things that are just scanning for a known vulnerability and exploiting it. Uh, the penetration test is going to be really, really good at finding both types of these weaknesses. It's going to find the obvious, uh, the things that we like to call, the, you know, the low-hanging fruit, but it's also going to find these uh, uh, attack paths that are, are usually a mix of sometimes uh, seemingly unimportant vulnerabilities or, or low or minor vulnerabilities chained together and can turn into a very successful attack. You know, social engineer someone with a phishing email, take control of their workstation, use their workstation to attack other systems and servers, working your way up to that, that most critical data. So, the, you know, really the what's in it for me is that, you know, you get to know before the criminals and I'll tell you, even year after year, we have clients that we've been working with for five, six, seven years in a row on penetration tests. And it's still pretty rare for us to come back with a clean report. You know, there's usually something to be found. And especially when we're talking about doing these things once a year or once every, you know, 15, 18 months, things change. Uh, the world of IT is not uh, stagnant. Uh, we're moving quick. Vulnerabilities change. And, and even as Dylan alluded before, you know, the ways that we're pen testing is, is much different today. In the past, we were focusing on exploiting missing patches and things like that. Now we're looking at uh, areas where users and administrators have been maybe sloppy with their, their credentials and their, their passwords, privileges, things like that, and trying to find those and, and exploit those. So before, uh, uh, a quick question that popped in here that I just want to, I think it tags on when you talk about doing a pen test once a year, there's a question around continuous pen testing. Uh, uh, I, the specific question is the continuous pen testing on your website. And there, you know, what, what is that? I thought that it would be a good time just to, maybe you could answer that or address that really quick before we move on to the next, uh, the next part of this. No, that's a, a great point. And I just said, I think a second ago, that's a lot of companies do these penetration tests on more of an annual basis or sometimes stretch it out to, you know, year and a half or something like that. And on average, a lot of like an external pen test might take a, a week, two weeks, even three weeks, depending on the size and scope and things like that. And that's it. You know, we test, we report, uh, we present that out. And you know, let's say that whole process took a month. That means that there's 11 months of the year that you're not being pen tested. And, you know, that is a gap. That, that is an area that always concerns us and something that we've been starting to address here over the last couple of years. And, you know, this is a not real unique to Centercom, I would say at this point, but somewhat. Uh, we offer, you know, a 
exactly what you just said, continuous penetration testing. So instead of just doing that one point in time test, we'll still come in and do that. We'll get a really good baseline. Imagine going to like the doctor and getting a, a full body MRI scan or something like that and, and getting that baseline, knowing exactly where you are today and then paying attention to every little thing that changes after that and evaluating it. You know, did a new server pop up on the internet or out in Azure or Amazon, uh, Amazon AWS or something like that? Uh, was it hardened? Was it patched? Was it secured properly? You know, keeping an eye on all those things year round and then letting uh, these guys, you know, sitting here on the call with us today, the human beings, that the real pen testers uh, hop in and evaluate it further. So we can do uh, some a lot of you know monitoring and, and paying attention to everything that's changed and go in and evaluate it in real time. 